I'm going to teach you guys everything you need to know about the new Pyro main. Starting off with location, the first place that you locate them at is where the wyvern are along the trail of lava where the lava cave is. And they will basically spawn in the same location as the wyvern. Okay, so the trick to taming these guys is you need to get a water source and able to put out their internal flame so that you could do damage to the creature and then mount it and go on a killing spree to tame said creature. And in the process of taming, they have a inferno limit. And once you reach 100% with the inferno limit, that is when you can actually tame the creature. So, so you have two options for dousing a pyromane in water. You could either wait till it rains and hang out where the wyvern are, grab it and just start attacking. Or the second thing is you could use your own wyvern to grab it and bring it to any source of water. Now if you bring it to where the blue obelisk is, it is loaded with micro raptors and if you get thrown off your mount at any time you will not be able to remount the pyromane for five minutes and if you go to red obelisk the issue with that one is that the caprasuchus is spawned so i recommend the center stream body of water and i have not tried this location out but any bottle body of water will suffice but you have to be careful about what's in the surrounding area so here are a few general tips for when you are trying to fill up your inferno meter by going on a killing spree you're going to want to pick dinosaurs that will not run away from you and that are fairly easy to kill because you only have 30 seconds in between each kill before the pyromane will throw you off the mount. After you fill the inferno meter, then you will be able to do something called flame boost that will automatically, when at 100% inferno meter, tame the creature for you. So, let's go over the skills that they have. First of all, you could wear them as a shoulder pet or as a regular mount which is basically a little bit bigger than a saber tooth it's kind of the size of a thylacleo now in this form when it's on your shoulder and you could switch between shoulder and rideable mount when it's on your shoulder you could use it as a flamethrower when you are attacking something and you could set it to what its range is it could be high to low to off so when you are in the rideable mount, you actually have a few skills that you can use at your disposal. And the first one being that you could swap it from the shoulder mount to the rideable mount. Now when you have it on the shoulder, you hold square and pick it to the ride. And vice versa. Moving on to the next skill, Flame Absorb. Basically, it was a little bit misleading for me because I thought maybe if I hang in lava, it'll just fill up its inferno meter. Or, you know, maybe if it's super heat outside, it would fill my inferno meter. That is not what it does. What it does is it consumes the food in the inventory of the beast, and then it fills your inferno meter. But. I still have not perfected this one because it is not doing it at 0%. So I'm not 100% sure when you are able to consume food to get Inferno. And the next one is Flame Boost. And what Flame Boost is, is when you have any percent of Inferno, it engulfs your body in fire making you do more fire damage towards enemies. The, the next skill we will talk about is the Flame Leap. The Flame Leap basically just launches you wherever you want to go.
It's got pretty good range on it, and I do not believe it does fall damage. It does have a height cap, so you can't go too crazy in the sky, and you can also do damage by doing this flame leap. Those are all the skills associated with the ride mount of the Pyromane. Now there's a few other things that we're going to go over. Number one, depending on how you are riding or shouldering your Pyromane, it gives you buffs. So, if you are riding your, power, your Pyromane, you get weathered in fire, which gives you fire immunity and increased insulation. Now, if you have a shoulder mount, you get cuddled by fire, which is increased insulation. And both of these bonuses stack if you have one on your shoulder and a rideable mount. And yes, you can do both at the same time. Now, the other two things we want to talk about. Uh, I tried getting it to burn resources like a forge and it does not do it. You cannot burn metal ingots with them. You only can cook food and turn prime meat into prime cooked meat and same with regular meat. And it also does eventually turn it into jerky without the use of oil. The other thing we're going to talk about is they have flaming feces. Uh, Basically, the only thing that it says is that it produces a more efficient fertilizer if it's combined with a thatch bin. I do not know if this works with a dung beetle. Now, with that being said, I want to bring up one point. Uh, currently, we are, you know, facing rain. And this is the one natural setting where it will take down the fire shield of the pyromane, allowing you to attack it and mount it. But I think it's glitched for some reason because I'm currently riding mine and the rain is not doing anything. You will see a very noticeable difference when they have this fire shell around them as opposed to when they are burnt out and don't have it. So going back to the method of using a dung beetle, it appears that you can do it because the dung beetle did pick it up. Now I don't know if the fertilizer will say that it is a more efficient version. We shall find that out later after it produces some fertilizer with the flaming medium animal feces. The old question, can they mate? In fact, they can mate. It isn't an egg, it is genstration, just like the saber tooth. And this means that you do have a possibility of imprinting your pyromanes. So that's pretty cool. They also come in different colors. I have a blue flame and a red flame. I have, I think I saw a few other colors, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Overall, what I'm gonna say is they are very versatile. They're cool, they're unique. I do like them, but personally, I, I do not think it's worth $5. I mean, everything that they can do you pretty much already have a dinosaur that can do it and the other thing is that i have no idea if these dinosaurs exist outside of scorched earth i don't have any idea on the island where they would be maybe the volcano cave maybe and I have not played the center to find out if they exist on that map either. So all around $5 doesn't sound that great for a oversized saber tooth that's on fire and can do a bunch of cool things.